What's up guys, it's Patricia from TarantulaHeaven.com and I have Spidey here with me. Um, she has been munching on a worm all day. Well, not all day, but for at least the last few hours. Um, I think she's just about done. So hopefully that means she's gonna start grooming herself or moving around for you guys. Hopefully she does something cool. Um, we'll see. She's great just being there. And we also have the jealous cat here who loves uh, <laughs> taking part in all of uh, Spidey's adventure, extremely jealous of all the spiders. So anyway, um, if this is your first time um, going to my channel, um, welcome. I put out videos every single week about tarantula care and tarantula facts and spider facts. And I also put out a Tarantula Tuesday newsletter every single week, um, which is also sharing about my life with my spiders and more tarantula education and fun. Anyway, today we're gonna to talk about um, something that I hope will help newcomers to the hobby or people who are interested in getting into the hobby a lot um, because the tarantula hobby is growing pretty fast right now, which is awesome. Uh, and I think that, that when you're first getting into it, I remember how confused I was and how many mistakes I made. So um, today I wanna to focus on how to actually buy a tarantula. And now like there's tons of resources online already about what kind of tarantula should you get or like what kind of tarantula are you looking for or like what kind of species would be appropriate for you but this isn't going to cover that this is more going to walk you through the process and kind of help you avoid common pitfalls or scams or mistakes that um, I made and I've also seen a lot of other tarantula owners make especially ones that are new to the hobby and are just kind of finding their footing. So I hope that this will kind of clear up um, a lot of questions for, for newbies especially um, but I think that even more experienced owners will be able to relate to this because I think we've all kind of made these mistakes um, or at least some of them. So I hope that this video will clear up um, some of the confusion and give you more of like a blueprint or plan um, that will help you um, figure out how to get into the hobby and um, how to buy your first tarantula easily and safely. So the first thing I want to cover is like where should you even buy a tarantula from? There's a lot of options and not all of them are the best. So I'm going to handle um, one of the most common mistakes that newbies make is, and it's one that I've made, so I feel like I could talk about this quite a bit. Um, it's to buy it from a local pet store, not an exotic store, just like a regular pet store that specializes more in like cats and dogs type of stuff. Um, that is a place that I would not advise you going um, at all. Um, first of all, um, these places are extremely... Uh, horrible in their care for these animals like i said like these these pet stores are more geared towards cats and dogs and like the furry mammals um they don't really treat their exotic animals uh that great if you if you are an experienced tarantula owner and you've looked at any of the enclosures of these animals it is absolutely heartbreaking i can't tell you how many times i've walked into a pet store and wanted to buy a tarantula just so i could rescue it um but yet not wanting to give them my business either so that they could abuse more tarantulas <laughs> My first spider is uh, Spidey right here. She's a Chilean rose hair, and that's a really common tarantula that is sold by regular pet stores. Well, it's kind of changed now that they've been banned, but um, at the time, years ago, that species was not. Um, so it was really cheap and uh, easy to get. You know, I mean, one of the things that I noticed at these tarantulas are commonly on wood chips and they're surrounded by multiple crickets or food items that they might even be in pre-malt, but the store doesn't care. Um, and the other thing when you go to a local pet store is that a lot of these uh, employees, and it's not their fault, but the employees there are not educated properly about um, the animals that they're selling. And, you know, for there's probably not many people coming in and buying tarantulas. They're more interested in getting dogs or cats or bunnies or whatever. Um, and I don't think that these pet stores push their employees to actually educate themselves about all the animals that they're selling. Um, you know, I think that in most cases, the people with these jobs are really young and they're just trying to do their job while they're in high school or whatever, or maybe not, you know, I'm not, I don't know. But in my experience, the person who sold me Spidey was very young, didn't know anything about tarantulas, um, tried to sell me a bunch of equipment that I thought I needed, but I definitely didn't and was actually dangerous. For example, a lot of local pet stores will tell you to buy sponges for the water dish and you don't need that, it's really bad. It introduces bacteria to the tank. So that was a big mistake that I made at first. Um, another thing with the pet stores is that a lot of times they don't actually know where their tarantulas are coming from or they're not getting them ethically and they're not raising them either. So um, the 
the place that sold my Meech Spidey, couldn't tell me her sex, couldn't tell me how old she was, um, couldn't really give me a history of her like last malt or anything like that. Um, so that's the kind of thing that you run into. You're going to have to do a lot of guessing and a lot of uh, like not really knowing what the hell is going on if you buy it from a pet store that doesn't know what they're talking about. Um, now, of course, there actually are um, regular exotic stores that specialize in things like reptiles and um, arachnids, which is great. I mean, I would definitely suggest going there. Um, I was lucky enough that actually a um, local exotic store actually did open up near me. It's called Ill Exotics, and I actually got um, Blinky from them, my Arizona blonde sling, um, because, I, you know, I was like, I don't want to go back to another pet store for my tarantula. And I was getting uh, Blinky in the winter, so I didn't want to take the chance of having to ship this tarantula in the cold. So I decided to check them out, and they are great. They really care about their tarantulas. Um, and I really like Ill Exotics. I would recommend them. They also sell online. Um, so, you know, if you have a local exotic store, great. That's awesome. Definitely go there instead because they can probably tell you um, more about that tarantula. If there's not an exotic store near you, you can also try to see if there's any conventions uh, coming to your area because there actually are like a lot of, I think Repticon is, at least in the US, they're like all over the US. So, um, you know, look for those dates. They post them online. So see if there's any coming soon to you. Um, that is a place where a lot of tarantula owners acquire new uh, tarantulas from reputable breeders or people who really know their stuff. Another issue with uh, local pet stores is the ethics. Now I did talk about the care um, and all those concerns and like how these animals are pretty much abused and treated terribly, but there's also another ethical concern and which is pretty controversial and popular in the tarantula hobby and that is uh, wild caught tarantulas versus captive bred tarantulas. Um, a lot of local pet stores get wild caught tarantulas or like they just don't know where their tarantulas are coming from at all. And um, when you have wild caught tarantulas, you could be introducing disease because, you know, we don't know the history of these animals, but these tarantulas are also being smuggled out of their natural habitat unethically um, without like the proper permits or, you know, whatever regulations. Um, so it's not ethical and it actually hurts the hobby. When they're captive bred, that means that they've been raised ethically. Um, everything is good with the spider. Uh, these people can usually tell you how many times it molted like a lot of them have raised them from slings they bred the parents <laughs> you know like they can, it's more safe um as far as the health of the tarantula and as far as the actual ethics of the tarantula hobby you know a reason that i love ill exotics is because they're really big into captive bred and the ethical stuff in the tarantula keeping hobby and like keeping things good in the hobby so um i definitely support that and that that makes me comfortable to buy from them i buy my food from them now and if i ever get another tarantula i will definitely go back to them i've been really happy with blinky um, and just knowing that they actually care about the future of the hobby and like the future of these um, animals really makes me feel happy with my purchase and support of like a small business like that. Now, if you don't have a convention coming near you um, or an exotic store near you, there are lots of other options. You can buy a tarantula online. Lots of people do this. And there are like so many companies uh, online that have great reputations and they're well established. So you don't have to worry about getting scammed or anything like that. It's more of just choosing one. Um, so I'm going to leave a link below to a list of companies that um, I have found to be reputable. I haven't actually purchased from any of these companies, but uh, fellow tarantula owners have highly recommended them and they're really popular in the hobby. So I feel like um, I feel safe recommending them to you. Um, and I, I ha will say that I recommend going more to a company than uh, tarantula owner to tarantula owner, um, just because I've seen an increase in tarantula Facebook groups of people getting scammed. And this makes me so sad. Um, it, like if you go into any tarantula Facebook group, you'll find at least a few people at any point in time who have been scammed by somebody on Facebook or somewhere else. Um, see a lot on Facebook where someone will, you know, be messaging somebody and they'll, you know, hand over money and agree that you're going to give me the spider and the spiders either arrive um, dead and they don't get a refund when they try to, you know, be like, hey, uh, something went wrong with shipping. Can you either refund me or give me a replacement because I didn't get the spider in a live state? <laughs> um, and these people will just disappear. It's so easy to just delete your profile on Facebook and it makes me so sad especially with people who are really new to the hobby, that they get discouraged because they got screwed over. 
So um, I'm seeing this a lot. So that's why I would definitely uh, recommend going more to a company than just trusting somebody on the internet. Not that everybody is like that. I think that there's more great people in this hobby than bad, but I think some people are definitely taking advantage of it. Shout out to anybody who's called somebody out publicly for doing that because then we can get them out of those groups and um, make sure that they don't do that to anybody else. And it's just really sad. Um, it's kind of disgusting. <laughs> um, so, you know, at least if you go to a company, you know that they have a reputation to protect. You know that they have sold tarantulas to other people before. And um, you know that they're legit. So I would definitely recommend going that route rather than just going to another person online. And when you are going to a company online, you want to pay attention to the fine print or not even fine print because a lot of them just spell it out, which is great. What you want to look for is a um, LOA guarantee, which is called a live on arrival guarantee. And this is the company's policy of them guaranteeing you that when when you buy a tarantula from them, you're going to get a live animal <laughs> when he, when it gets to you. Um, so you definitely want to make sure that a company that you're buying from has that because that protects your money and it also protects your animal. They're going to ship this creature with the most utmost care um, and they're going to do it quickly and try to get it to you um, as fast as possible with whatever shipping you've paid for. Um, so this kind of ensures your investment and it also means that if you do happen to get a tarantula that um, you know, unfortunately passed during the shipping process for whatever reason and it's the seller's fault, then you'll either be reimbursed or um, you're going to get a replacement spider for that. So um, definitely look for that. Um, I also want to point out some other really, really important things um, which might affect the live on arrival guarantee or not. Um, depending on the company, but you want to choose the fastest shipping. A lot of people complain that, you know, the fastest shipping, which would be like, I think FedEx or whatever, um, which is what is advised by companies, is really expensive. But honestly, like this is a live animal that could be shipped to you from across the country, who knows, but um, you don't want these animals to be without water or uncomfortable for long periods of time. They're very fragile. And you want to make sure that they get from point A to point B in the fastest amount possible. So I think like the the recommended shipping rate is like a 24 hour um, shipping. I think you don't. A lot of companies will not do a live on arrival guarantee if you choose slower shipping because they want to make sure that their product gets to you the fastest. So. Um, I think it's worth the investment to make sure that you have a live spider and, you know, we don't want to be uh, unnecessarily making animals suffer just because we want to be cheap or save money. You know, I mean, I think that when you're investing in a pet, you really need to take these considerations into account. So that would be my advice. You know, a lot of companies do do the live on arrival guarantee, but you have to choose the fastest shipping. So that might affect, you know, what kind of company you go to, whether you want to go to an online company who is not that far from you or one who's really far from you. Um, either way, you know, I would say choose the fastest shipping regardless. Another thing you want to be really wary of is what time of year that you are buying a tarantula in. I would highly recommend that you don't buy in harsh weather, whether it's really cold or really hot, because this also um, definitely can affect whether your tarantula uh, arrives to you in good health or not. Um, because when it's really cold, then tarantula uh, sellers are forced to kind of take other um, measurements to make sure that the tarantula arrives safely, such as heat packs. And I've definitely seen accidents happen with this. And sometimes it's nobody's fault. Sometimes something happens in shipping. But, um, you know, the best way to make sure that your tarantula arrives safely is to not only choose the fastest shipping, but be mindful that you are not going to be shipping or asking a tarantula to be shipped to you in harsh weather conditions. And, you know, harsh weathers can also cause delays. So your live on arrival guarantee may not, may be void just because, you know, there was a snowstorm and there, there's nothing that the seller can actually do about that once it leaves them. So you want to just make sure that all the conditions are good so that your tarantula can get from the seller to you as soon as possible with as little troubles as possible. And my final tip would be to ask around. Like, uh, no one wants to see another tarantula owner get screwed over. So there's so much support in this hobby, which is so awesome. If you go on any forum, like tarantulaforums.com or arachnoboards.com, or even if you pop into a bunch of uh, tarantula Facebook groups, like I think some really supportive ones, are the Tarantula Collective. I think that's a really great one. Um, so 
any any tarantula Facebook group really. Um, and you just ask around of what companies are reputable and what companies they've had good experiences with, they'll tell you, you know, they people want this hobby to succeed. They want you to succeed and they want these animals to be safe and cared for. So just ask, um, you know, and like read reviews. Um, people will tell you. So yeah, I hope that definitely clears up any confusion. Um, I hope that this was useful, especially to people who, you know, I mean, you can do all the research in the world about what kind of care requirements and stuff that your tarantula needs, but it's still really easy to get confused, especially when you're new to the hobby. So I hope that helped. And uh, if you like this, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any other tips for newbies when, when they're getting into the hobby, please comment below. I'd love to hear it. And uh, I will see you later, guys.